Good morning. It's uh, Friday the 22nd and welcome to Soci 3311 online sociological statistics. My name is Steve Blanchard. I am the instructor in the course and I thought I'd spend a few minutes uh, this morning sort of briefly introducing you to the course and to me and to sort of how we'll do the setup. Here behind me, I'm sitting on a stool and here behind me is a whiteboard. Um, what we'll do every week, what I'll do every week, sort of you and I together, um, is I'll do two videos. One around Tuesday every week that will talk about the concepts of the statistical procedures that are in front of us that week. And about Thursday or Friday I'll do the second video and it'll be a demonstration video just as though we were in a regular class face to face where I'll use this whiteboard and mark a lot and all of that to do equations and uh, demonstrations of how to do homework and, and things like that. So you'll get, uh, this is one of many, perhaps as many as 30 videos over the course of the semester that um, YouTube videos that I'll send you. I'll send them to you by email. I will not post them on Blackboard. As soon as I do them, uh, I get them from YouTube and I'll forward the YouTube uh, email to you. And uh, so that you can get them pretty quickly. It's uh, Blackboard sometimes a little cumbersome with all of that. All right. So um, Tuesdays are conceptual. Uh, and I won't be sitting like this likely. Maybe I will be. Maybe just be sitting in my chair doing the video. But for sure the days that we do the demonstrations whiteboard, I'll be sitting here on the stool and drawing and all that sort of thing. I'll set it up in a way that you'll be able to see it uh, perhaps more clearly than right now. This is just sort of a demonstration setup. Okay, so let's talk about social statistics. Um, you'll be able to read some of this on the uh, on the syllabus. Uh, I don't want to take uh, too much of your time because uh, I'll be back to you on Tuesday of next week anyway with another video for uh, the first chapter and that'll kind of bring what we talk about what I mentioned today more into a uh, more elaborated theme on Tuesday. But one thing you want to keep in mind which is very important is social statistics um, really began in the 19th statistics began in the 19th century as a part of the social reform movement. Social reformists uh, social scientists, conscious types, were looking around um, London, let's say, if you've um, read any novels from that period of time, you know how uh, widely diverse was the um, economic disparity, um, a lot of economic, social economic suffering. The social reformers were trying to figure out how best to describe that not just for themselves and for the rest of society, but perhaps how to best describe it for making a proposal for funding to kind of even out uh, the, uh, the social field, if we can say it in that way. And one of the ways that they uh, thought about this um, was in terms of statistics. The state of the society, the status of the society, all the same origin of words, the statistics of the society. So the statistics became a language of the social reform movement for describing, explaining, and predicting um, the inequalities in the social economic environment that they saw around them. Some of it pretty destitute. Um, so I think you'll like it from that standpoint because that concept resonates with us and in fact if you once you we get into the course and begin thinking about it a little more in terms of statistics you'll see that we're still in a social reform movement. Uh, the degree of inequality, economic inequality, and health disparity in this country is, is as wide as anywhere in the world. Uh, and when you think about all the wealth that we have and how unevenly distributed it is, it is not very different than how it was in 19th century England. So these social reform statistics, uh, in a way that we'll be doing this uh, uh, fall, will resonate with you. We're social scientists. Some of us are sociologists in this class, some of us are criminal justice, some of us are in social services at Warden, but we're all social scientists, all interested in social statistics in ways of communicating what we see around us in a mathematical way or statistical way. One of the things that we want to think about statistics for those of us, and many of us are, out doing program development, program interventions, uh, you know, proposals for research, the statistics provide a level of evidence of the situation that you see in front of us. And we'll talk a lot over the course of the semester about the evidentiary value of statistics in any argument you're making, let's say, if you went out to uh, the commissioners, Bear County commissioners, 
and asked for some funding for some uh, east side project. If you've got statistics to back you up, you've got evidence to back you up, uh, an additional piece of evidence. We'll talk a lot about that. So uh, reflect on the course overview here. It talks about that and get your minds and, and hearts into the value of statistics. Um, be calm. A lot of people don't like statistics because they think it's difficult, but I can tell you that uh, by the end of the semester you will understand statistics and enjoy statistics and certainly have a good sense of the value of it. So uh, be calm and uh, things will be okay. Um, there are student learning outcomes that you'll see here that are always important. Uh, these are things that I hope that you will accomplish uh, during the course of this semester and um, the measurement of those are uh, for the most part related to tests and uh, we won't have any discussion in this online class uh, it's going to move pretty quickly. There's homework every week, and uh, so I think we'll be able to do this without uh, without any discussion. We can put I'll put some discussion out there, and if you choose to get in discussion, that's fine. But it's not going to be a requirement of the course. Um, you uh, one of the things that we are uh, interested in sociology. This is a sociology course is what we call the sociological imagination. That's one of the principal the principal uh, outcome certain student learning outcome and that is that how is my own Steve Blanchard's personal narrative a reflection of all of the contexts in which I have moved through during my time even including at this very moment uh, family my gender my ethnicity uh, the communities I've lived in um, all of those are a it's almost as though I were you could say I was an onion right and so here's Steve Blanchard sitting in front of you with an onion as an onion, and I'm I'm pulling off pulling off the layer of my gender and the layer of my ethnicity and the layer of this and the layer of that. Each one of those layers, to some extent, is a reflection of the context in which I've passed through which I passed over the, over the years. My own personal narrative. So we want to think about that, and um, and so when we think about that, we think, well, what's that have to do with statistics? Well, it has to do with a whole bunch of us in the same place, the same time, with our own personal narratives. So what do we have similar? in common and what do we have in difference and we know we must have some things in common because we successfully navigate the social world uh, as we move down the hallway we know that we basically go down the hallway on the right just like we drive on the right in this country in England they probably go down the hallway on the left because they drive on the left there are patterns of behavior that are not fixed and hard like in stone but patterns that are predictable and those patterns are interesting to us for uh, statistics for example what kind of a pattern leads to poor health outcome in a population. We'll have a lot more conversation about this. So that overall uh, student learning outcome, developing a sociological imagination, that's what that's about. The second overall one is about the application and practice of sociological ideas and approaches and how we can recognize those patterns, understand those patterns, capitalize on those patterns for helping to change society, to help in the social reform movement, much like what they saw in the 19th century with uh, patterns. So, um, and the, why they framed out the statistical perspective. They'll have lots of that. Um, and then they have these specific ones about the value of statistics, the comparison of the quantitative look at social phenomena of, say, friendship, uh, as opposed to the qualitative uh, perspective on social phenomena, which is like drilling down and getting into the meaning of friendship. Quantitative is more of a breadth of study. We take a sample of a thousand people and ask them questions about friendship. We'll talk about the uh, point counterpoint between those two. Um, we're going to look at three different, really four different kinds of statistics during the course of the semester, and you'll see as you go through this later on your own, the syllabus is organized that way, the course is organized that way. We're going to do descriptive statistics, which are the averages and means, you know, the average populate, uh, the average age in a population is a descriptive statistic. Uh, we'll do explanatory statistics. Um, explanatory statistics are something like um, how we might um, say education as a variable. We'll get into that uh, next week. How it varies across the population, so we would have uh, a lot of education, some of us have as little education, some of us have somewhere in between. How on average does education vary by gender? 
do we see an average age difference, or average education level difference, male gender to female gender? And can we see a statistically significant difference between those two averages? That's explanatory, using gender to explain the variation in education. And then the third one that we'll do uh, is predictive towards the end of the semester. That's regression. We'll spin that off into a uh, course in the spring in class, in a lab, or using statistical software. And uh, there we'll predict. Uh, say, for example, for each, um, each change in education, each year of education, how much can you predict a gain in income? So uh, well, those are the kinds of things we'll be doing now. The fourth thing that we'll do is the kind of an umbrella one, and that's inferential statistics. A lot of statistics has to do with uh, population and sampling. City of San Antonio, for example, has, I don't know, a million people, let's say. We couldn't possibly go around, let's say, and we want to know what the average age is and knock on every door and say, what's your age, and then sum up them all up and divide by a million. Take us forever. It's prohibitive, cost-wise, personnel-wise, and all of that. But we can draw down a sample that's representative of the population, the composition and demographic features, age, gender, Hispanic, all of that, are reflective of the larger one of uh, the population. We can ask questions of the sample, maybe only a thousand people, and get something that we can then infer that the finding that we got with the sample, we can infer that had we gone the route from the population to uh, in the population itself, we would have found basically the same thing. We'll talk a lot about that come about, uh, let's see, this August, probably somewhere towards the end of September. Uh, in October, we'll be heavy into it. Okay, so those are the four sorts of things we'll do, and they're sequential. We do the descriptive first, and then move to the explanatory, and then move to the predictive with the overall umbrella of inferential statistics. We'll talk a lot more about that as time goes by. You'll see here that the principal means of assessment are um, exam um, homework assignments, nine of them to be exact. Uh, just about one every week, a little greater than a week. The only reason there's not one every week is that the, every so often there's a week where we do tests. Uh, Tuesday we'll do a review. I'll do a review video and then we'll do the test on uh, a Thursday or later in that week. So about every three weeks we've got a week of review and testing. And you'll see how that set up here. There's four exams. Um, at the end, uh, we'll do a, uh, the final will be two hours, as it always is. One hour will be that fourth exam, and the second hour will be kind of a comprehensive um, exam, uh, essay type. Now, let me take me back to two things that we're going to do in this course, which goes back to the front page of the syllabus. I'm not interested so much in your learning how to calculate. Um, how to calculate rates and stuff. Those are important pieces. You have to do that. It's foundational. Um, and you'll have plenty of practice of that with your homework. But what I'm really after is for you to get a grasp of the conceptualization of statistics. The why. Not just the how of doing a statistic, but the why of statistics. The conceptual. There'll be a piece or two on each homework that'll have you address the issue of conceptualization. Why are we doing an analysis of variance? What's the value of that? And don't worry about what analysis of variance is right now. You'll see what it is later. So I'm more interested in your grasping the conceptualization and value of statistics than I am in your actual calculation. The truth is, in this course, you're going to be doing a lot of hand calculation because I think that's the way it, you know, in my old mind, it's the way it sinks in. I think it's true for you. When you're out there in the world, you're going to have statistical packages that will allow you to do uh, in picoseconds what will take you likely all of Sunday afternoon to do. Don't get upset and don't get angry. That's just the part of the process and the way, part of the learning environment. Doing it manually, it helps it, the relationships internally to sink in and gives you a better opportunity to interpret the finding that you'll do eventually when you're out there with a statistical package software doing it. Okay, so um, you'll see the course calendar. Oh, this is the text. It's an old edition and uh, we stuck with it for a while. Uh, because it's it's a reason we get good I, I do I, I teach this course uh, now twice a, a fall every fall but I've done it now for going on 20 years in the last few years we've used this text and I like it students seem to like it pretty well so I've stuck with it I've not changed the move to the most current edition because as you know editions get more expensive as they come out and I thought this is good enough for us now uh, you're the last cohort who will have this text next year we'll do the same text but we're going to go to the new edition so this is the one that you'll be finding out there. It's edition eight. 
Uh, one or two of you have asked about Edition 7, and it's okay, but you've got to be careful because the homework is pulled from the problems in the back of the chapter. And one of the differences between Edition 7 and 8 is that the homework sequence in the back of each chapter is a bit different. So if you use Edition 7 and you get my homework, you be sure that you're double-checking with Edition 8 that you, you're solving the right problems. <coughs> All right, now, Blackboard. Um, we're using Blackboard, but not in any uh, elaborated way. I will post homework. The syllabus is up there now. Um, the, uh, in fact, it's available to you. Uh, by the time you get this video, which is today, Friday the 22nd, uh, everything's all will all be set up. I don't know that I'll have homework one or and two uh, from next week for next week up, but I will by the end of the day on Monday. Just be mindful. <coughs> go up to Blackboard and check it out. You'll be a folder up there. The front page will have the syllabus and a folder for homework. And just you know, I think I'll have it by chapter. Just go and look for chapter five homework, chapter six homework, chapter ten homework, and all of that. And I won't post them a uh, semester in advance. I'll post them as we go uh, about a week ahead of time uh, so we can kind of see how the flow is going. The homework will always be posted a week before the week of the discussion or conversation by video of that theme. So in other words, I will post homework one as we move into homework one videos next week. And by the end of next week, I'll post homework two which will cover chapter two and three and all that. So homework will be posted a week ahead. That gives you a chance to take a look at the homework and raise any questions, and we'll use discussion for questions. I got a question. Uh, you can always email me. Uh, what I like to do is use the email. When you see that email later today, it'll have it'll be like a, how do you call it? A um, uh, name term slips my mind. But all of our names will be on there. So if you send me a question by email, um, I'm likely to respond in answer to everybody. Just like we would be in class, you'd raise your hand, ask a question, everybody hear the, the question and the answer. I'll do basically the same thing. Send me questions by email, and I'll respond to your questions by email, and I'll route it to listserv, I guess that's the word. Everybody will see your question and the answer. Um, and it, you know, Good students ask questions. Good students ask questions. Yes. So if you have a question, ask the question. You don't want to be sitting there wondering, what am I going to do with this? And then trying it, and sending in a homework, and it's off center somehow. Ask questions. Um, it's a, you know, it's also a measure of your own getting engaged in it. All right. So I think that's all I want to say at this point. You'll see how to get a hold of me on email. Oh, one other thing. Um, uh, be difficult for us to do office hours. You'll see on here that I do have office hours. That's an advantage for some of you in here in San Antonio, but not so for uh, if you're in Houston or Lafayette or somewhere. Uh, but this I will tell you. And I, I don't know so if I said it on here. I should have if I didn't. But I'm looking you in the face now saying it. Oka oka. That uh, if you email me or call me on uh, this contact information here, I guarantee you that if you do that between the hours of 5 in the morning and 9 at night, seven days a week, I will back in touch with you within two hours. I use my iPhone to stay, I don't see it right, it's right here. I use my iPhone to stay in touch. So I check it every hour or two to see what's up. Um, if you're working on a problem on Saturday, Monday, the last thing you want to do when it's due on Tuesday is wait for me back to you on Monday. You email me or you call me and if you want me to call you, I'll call you back. If you want me to email you back, I'll email you back. But I will do that within two hours uh, between the hours of 5 in the morning and 9 at night. Now what that's telling you is you're likely to be up in your jam doing your homework 12 in the morning and you've got a question and you send an email, you will not hear from me before 5 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> so now we have the understanding, right? All right, so again, my name is Steve Lanchard. I uh, taught this course a lot. I'm out of community doing a lot of community health. I am a mechanic. Uh, another word for community health assessments here in Bear County and around the three different places. And um, I love statistics for the same reason the social reformers come to it. And I hope you'll uh, become where you enjoy it, even love it, uh, as much as I am before the semester is over with. Look forward to working with you semester. And uh, this is Friday, weekend coming up. Y'all be safe out there, and we'll be touched next week.